Did you know that yesterday across the country, there were a ton of protests in support of police, in support of America? We had the Rescue America rally in Beverly Hills with around a thousand or so people estimated to have been there, although the media says much less. I've seen the photos and the videos. But yeah, I didn't hear this. I saw some posts from some people, and I wonder why it is that these stories about right wing rallies pro-police rallies or anti-defund the police stuff, it doesn't make the mainstream national coverage. I think for obvious reasons, mainstream media is biased. When we see nationwide Black Lives Matter protests, all the media says protests across the country. When it's Blue Lives Matter, it's eh, no one talks about it. Only local outlets. Check this out. Hundreds of demonstrators join Rescue America rally in Beverly Hills. We got this one, Back the Blue. Community rallies to show support for police in Raleigh, Cleveland, What is it? Clevelanders participate in anti-police protest, back the blue rally. This was actually both. So there was a rally for and against police, but you still had, you know, the conservatives coming out. Check this out from the Denver Post. Now, this one is about people getting arrested, but Fort Collins, there was a back the blue rally. And yes, scuffles broke out. People got arrested. But the point is the rally happened. That's what I'm highlighting. Sioux Falls, back the blue rally, sees large crowd. Back the blue rally in Fort Worth. Crazy. I did not hear any stories about all of these major events happening across the country. I saw this video from Brandon Strzok, who's the uh, walk. He's the guy who founded the walk away movement. Now I saw this video and I'm like, that looks like a couple thousand people in Beverly Hills. That's huge. That's huge, man. Look, we know that a bunch of people support Black Lives Matter, but you, you don't frequently see these massive crowds. Now, Fox 11 says an estimated 400 demonstrators were in attendance. I do not believe that. I saw the video, man. It was huge. I've covered protests. I've seen, you know, uh, crowd counts before. It, I thought it was a couple thousand, but apparently they're saying it's around a thousand. So Carlin Borsenko says, I'm sorry, there were significantly more than 400 people there. Maybe before the march, attendees showed up. Not everyone did both the rally and the march. There were minimally a thousand people there in Beverly Hills. I saw the vi- I saw some videos, man. It looked like it was at least, I, I, I thought it was more than a thousand, but hey, that could just be me. Keep in mind, I've covered these things, okay? I used to be on the ground for all of these rallies and riots and protests around the world. I did not think it was 400. But anyway, that's fine. Even if it was 400, the point is, these rallies are happening all over the country. And I got to say, it's good to see people finally standing up. Now, here's what, here's what I like to say. If you see 400, if that was a left-wing rally, it'd be 4,000. You know why? Because people have jobs. The left-wing people tend to be young. They tend not to work. Tend not to. I'm not saying they're all un- unemployed, but many of them, yes, are unemployed. For these conservatives, many who do have jobs, they can't come out to these things. Not only that, but conservatives tend to be in rural areas. So when you see a city have a large protest, the conservatives tend to be in the minority in these big cities. So this is this is big news. Check it out. They say the rally at Beverly Hills, uh, Beverly Gardens Park occurred after the group marched from West Hollywood, beginning at the intersection of Santa Monica and San Vicente Boulevards. Many, many were seen carrying American flags or Trump 2020 signs, as well as wearing MAGA merchandise. The rally was put together by an organization called Walk Away. We can see that, you know, Brandon Strzok, Scott Bayo, Lorenzo uh, Lamas, Joy uh, Villa, Mike Harlow, Blair White. We've got Shamika Michelle, Ricky Rebel. It's hard to read, sorry. And Carlin Borisenko were all there at this rally. Brandon Strzok, founder of Walk Away, said he started the organization in 2018. We are a movement of people who are walking away from the Democratic Party. We're walking away from the ideology of liberalism, the liberal media. Basically, we want to live in a country with peace and civility, truthfulness, kindness. And again, we are not getting that from the political left. So we're walking away from the Democrats, he said. Strzok said Saturday's event was their uh, was their third outdoor event. I, I got to stop there. Brandon, listen, liberalism is good. The problem is the horrible people who have corrupted what liberalism means. I know a lot of people like to say liberalism is a mental disorder. No, 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 no. This country was founded on principles of true classical liberalism. That's why I get offended. Okay, I don't really get offended. I'm kidding. But it's like, listen, these far leftists and these and these Biden Democrats are not liberals. They are illiberal. Anybody who would vote for Biden is illiberal. Okay, they do not believe in true liberal values. So personally, I don't like it. Now, a lot of people like to say I'm a classical liberal, and that's technically true, but I am a social liberal when it comes to modern politics, meaning my policies, my politics, the things I think about how, you know, taxes should work. It leans left. It absolutely does. That's a fact. So social liberals are where like Democrats used to be. 
maybe in like the 90s or 2000s. Now that I'm a big fan of the Democratic Party's history, mind you, I think they're gross. Now I've pretty much, I, I would never consider myself to be, you know, like a hardcore Democrat. I think I fell into the camp of default liberal, but I've definitely walked away from all of that stuff as well. So I, I, I hear you, man. I, to all these people, you know, walking away from the Democrats, I totally hear you. At this point, they have gone nuts. And I think anybody who's sticking with them, you, 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 you've, you, nah, man, I'm sorry. I don't like the Republicans. Nah, I'm not going to like them either. But you can, you, can dis, you can dislike both. Like, you can. And to be, to be fair, man, Trump is not the same as traditional Republicans. He's a moderate. He really is. So listen, I, I look at Trump and I'm like, I don't like him in terms of his professionalism and some policies, but at least he's for America. You know, Joe Biden, nah. And we've, we've had this intelligence report that came out that said Russia would prefer Trump. China would prefer Biden. Well, China is the big superpower with the concentration camps and all the dangerous, horrible oppression. So you know what? I'm sorry. Nah, no Joe for me. Anyway, look, this event was huge. Yet for some reason, Fox 11 only shows this tiny photo. That's not fair. That's come on. The crowd was way bigger than that. Look at this. I actually don't have uh, the, the photo. I think I might if I back up. There we go. Check out these photos. The crowd was way, way bigger. And I'd say it was way more than 400. Fox only shows that tiny little thing. But check this out. The, the events were happening all over the place. WRAL says, it is the job of the police to defend the public. Today, a large crowd of people gathered in downtown Raleigh to return the favor to defend the police. With roughly 40,000 followers on social media, Back the Blue NC held a sizable rally in downtown Raleigh outside the North Carolina General Assembly building. Concern over recent calls to defund the police, supporters rallied to defend the police. They risk their lives every day, and most people disparage them. Here, here, good sir, I agree. And I will absolutely rag on, I, I was ragging on cops earlier this morning about the people, the cops in New York City, the cops in New Jersey. But I'll tell you what, man, as an institution, the service they provide, we know why we need cops. It's ridiculous. I grew up in Chicago, man. It's, it's, the, it's the stupidest thing ever. I've, I've had tons of beef with police. Okay, I've had tons of issues, complaints filed. I grew up in Chicago. The cops there are corrupt. They disbanded a police unit. They were, the, the, the unit was robbing people's homes and invading people's homes. And I'm still not stupid enough to say disband the police. I still understood the concept of calling the cops when we were in trouble. And we would be upset. Sure, I got tickets from cops. Didn't like it. But there's a difference. There's a difference between like you got, you were, you know, you get pulled over or something. Mind you, I've had cops plant drugs in my car in Chicago, and I've been given bogus. I, got, I, I, was, I was given a bogus speeding ticket in Chicago. Not a fan. I was also saved from a mugging by cops in Chicago. It's not like you, you can expect officer friendly to only ever give you what you want. Life isn't fair sometimes, but the police as an institution are a necessary protection for the public, a barrier between them and crime. Sometimes there are bad cops. We got to arrest them and deal with them. Anyway, I'm not going to rant on Blue Lives Matter again. I want to point out the talk about the protests. So they say the anger is being taken out on all officers and it shouldn't be about that, said Jordan Wilson, who also supports Back the Blue. The fix should be more money towards funding the police on better training to fix these situations here, here. Hire better cops, train good cops, train them better, have better programs. You don't take away their resources. If we've got problems with police, we need more police accountability. We need more training. We need internal affairs. We need whatever. We need reform. We need body cams. That requires more money. And if you want mental health services, well, then you get more funding for mental health services. Here we go. Check this out. Cleveland. We had anti and police, anti police and pro police. And that's about it. It was a back, back the blue rally in the second district Cleveland police station. So you, you get a little bit of both here, but still conservatives, you know, the right is coming out. We got Sioux Falls, large crowd. I wonder how big it was. I don't know for sure. They say signs that read back the blue, defend the police. This is great. The Sioux, the Sioux Falls area back the blue rally started just about 17 minutes ago. Sidewalks along Minnesota Avenue by law enforcement center are filled with people showing their support here from them tonight. These don't seem nearly as big, but the point is these stories have been happening across the country. These are people standing up, speaking up, pushing back against the far left narrative. And I don't hear about it enough. I saw the story from Brand from Brandon of Walk Away, and I looked into it and I thought to myself, I'm not seeing this, you know, this story linked everywhere. So I decided to do a Google search. And sure enough, I found a ton of stories. Sioux Falls, Fort Worth, 100 people at Back the Blue, 100 plus stories. Wow. Amazing. These people actually are coming out. They're, they're speaking out where they can. But of course, considering the conservatives are more spread out, 
you're less likely to see these massive rallies. But we're still seeing big protests in support. Or actually, actually they're rallies. They're not, they're not protests. They're supporting cops. So what do you think? What do you think the media likes to say? Okay, all right, all right. I'll just do this, all right. As we're not hearing, we're only hearing from local outlets because of this. Here's some national level news. Protesters beaten, Black Lives Matter protesters beaten by pro-police group in wild video. Wow. You know what the video really was? It was a bunch of far left extremists entering someone else's neighborhood. The people who lived there came out and said, commie scum, get out of our neighborhood. Antifa backed up. And as they were leaving, they attacked a guy in a wheelchair. So these people rushed to the fence. And yeah, some dudes got stomped. But please frame it correctly. Across this country, people are standing up for police. They're defending their communities against these far left extremists. And I've, about, I've had enough of it, man. I, I'm, I, am, I am not a fan of these crazy wackos coming into private residences. So it's good to see people standing up, walking away and showing up in their communities to defend against the far left. That's the point. Hopefully this video is something optimistic for you to see that people are defending themselves against the extremism. Look, look, these pro cop people, they might have conservative values I don't agree with, but we agree with one thing. Extremists wearing all black, smashing up windows and attacking people should not be happening. I, I sat down with Glenn Beck and we talked about pro-life versus pro-choice. It was great. And afterwards we shook hands. It was like, it was, it was great to have a conversation with you, man. I really appreciate it. I understand your point of view. I think we have, you know, ethical, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's an ethical line I, neither of us wants to cross. We don't understand how to do it. That's a reality. You reach an impasse. We talk about it. We shake hands. We smile. We go vote. What are we getting now? This is lunacy. Bring it back to the days when two people would go on a panel and just shout at each other over their wedge issue at least, right? Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out, everybody, on this Sunday. I will see you all tomorrow in the next segment at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out.